If you compare your face to art, I know, just go with me, okay? Your face has texture, lots of texture. And now, if you put emollients in your products, this is what it does to your face. It makes it so smooth. That's right, I said, so, so smooth. Hey guys, welcome back. I know I said I was gonna talk about hyaluronic acid, but I actually put the pause button on that until I can do enough research on injectable hyaluronic acid to include that too. So today we're talking about emollients. What is emollients? A fatty substance with lubricating action that causes the skin to feel more soft and pliable. These fatty substances can be made up of silicones, hydrocarbons, esters, fatty alcohols, and natural oils. So what do they do? It's not complicated. They make the skin feel smooth. But when used in cosmetic products, they can actually prevent water loss in the skin. So oftentimes emollients are used in skincare formulations to give things a certain feel and texture. The essential tactile experience of beauty products is a huge component of the cosmetics industry and emollients are one of those things that give cosmetics products their distinct texture. So they can also be used to thicken products and one other thing they take into account when they're formulating skincare is the film that it's going to leave on your skin. So all of those things play into a role when formulators are choosing what type of emollients to use in their products. Now let's talk about what types of things are emollients. The number one thing that comes to my mind is silicone and particularly in hair smoothing products. I'm sure at some point you may have tried a product that promises to defrizz your hair. Very often times when you go to look at the ingredients you're going to see dimethicone or some type of silicone that is going to coat your hair and give it that smooth feeling um, and that is going to be an emollient. So let's talk about the categories of emollients. You have plant oils like castor oil, argon oil, chia seed, tamanu. Those are all going to be emollients in products. They're gonna give products a certain type of feel. Mineral oils, shea butter, cocoa butter, lanolin. Petroleum can also fall in the category of an emollient as well as an occlusive. Then let's talk about some synthetic ones that you're going to see. Dimethicone, a lot of the PEGs or PEGs are a type of emollient. A lot of them have emollient properties. So if you're looking through products and you're seeing something with a PEG on it and a number, that might be in the product as an emollient. So let's talk a little bit of science here. This study right here pointed out the importance of emollients in the user acceptance of a product. Yes, they used that statement. They actually got together a panel of 12 people to evaluate emollients based on their difficulty to spread, gloss, stickiness, residue, and oiliness. So really quick, let's talk about a couple products. This is the Josh Rosebrook Vital Balm Cream. Take a look at the texture. Oh, it smells so good. It definitely has a creamy-like texture. He's got mango butter in here, shea butter, broccoli seed oil, uh, avocado oil, all things that make this feel really rich and really creamy. Um, let's take a look at this Gressa Minimalist Corrective Serum Foundation. This is based in broccoli seed oil. And what a lot of people don't know is that broccoli seed oil is actually a substitute and tests very similarly to like a silicone oil. So that's one of the th magics of the Gressa makeup line is that they utilize that broccoli seed oil that gives their makeup that just beautiful texture and look on the skin because it mimics um, the synthetic silicones. Anyway, you guys, that's it for this video. I know it was short and sweet. I like to keep it short and sweet because I feel like it makes things easier to digest. Um, and if you keep watching, we're just going to keep building on everything that we're covering. Because um, I'm learning too as we go along. I'm not an expert. I think we all know that for sure. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next week. Bye.
Oh. Called the user acceptance of the product. 